Okay, welcome everyone to this panel. This is what, maybe the seventh, the eighth panel, no, the seventh panel we, we've done. It's the only one in August. We, we gave it a break um, after the July initial rush, and then we're going to start again every week, September and October. Um, today we have a very thorny subject, and that's why I called people who know what, what they're talking about much more than me about that. Uh, because when we started the idea of TRIPS, which is basically an OTA, uh, the reaction of everybody has is like, yeah, you never get bookings because there's Airbnb, there's booking, they get these guys of billions and you won't make it. And uh, while I acknowledge the difficulties, definitely, I don't believe it's impossible to get bookings. And we have here uh, three people who kind of know how to get bookings in this environment. We have uh, Antonio, who is an expert in direct bookings, even if the last years has, has not been doing this too much. But I'm very interest, interested to hear uh, how Antonio saw this thing change in the years. Uh, Antonio from Vacation Rental World Summit. Um, Antonio, could you just introduce yourself for the very few people who don't know you? <laughs> well, well, thanks for that. So, the very few people don't know me. I feel uh, embarrassed. Uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm a property owner, first and foremost. Uh, I've been running properties for 15 years uh, in Sardinia and now on Lake Maggiore in Italy as well. And um, seven years ago, I started the Vacation Rental World Summit uh, as a gathering, as, a, as an event, an initially an online event to gather people exactly for that reason, how to get more bookings, how to streamline workflows, and how to maximize revenue or ROI. And uh, so that's what I ended up doing mostly because uh, it, peaked, it took off a little bit. Uh, and uh, after a couple of years, we ran the event in person uh, uh, every year, doubling attendance uh, up until this year where Unfortunately, as, as we all know, because of what's happening, we're going back to the roots of seven years ago, going back online again this year. So Great. We did the Vacation Rental World Summit, which is, in my opinion, the best in the industry. Uh, it's the one I enjoy the most, definitely. And this year is going to be is going to be uh, online, and uh, we're going to share the the link. I've shared it already, but we're going to share it again uh, later on. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Antonio. And um, let's go to Michael. Uh, Sylvia, I'll leave you for last because um, well, because we know each other, but Michael, I never had the pleasure to to meet. So Michael from Bidroom, uh, you are somewhere in the north of Poland right now. And uh, well, tell us about yourself. Yeah, I started Michael. the company some years ago before Bidroom actually had a different company. It was a travel agency, flight hotel transfers, uh, tourist activities. Um, but actually, when we're dealing with hotels, we get the same complaint. The OTA is charging too much commission. Please help us. So in every meeting was the same. So like, I have to do something with this. And actually, this is how the ID of Bidoom started. Uh, of course, started with the ID. Then you're smarting, uh, starting with a small team. Now uh, we became much bigger, uh, nearly 890 people now from all over the world, many uh, as well in Poland, as you just mentioned, and now in the north part for a few days. Uh, was that the last part? Sorry. Uh, and yeah, a big part of our team is based in Poland. Krakow, uh, right? As well. Uh, what is a big change? What is a big difference between us and different OTA? Uh, one big difference is, first of all, we're standing for fairness. But one more important thing is also that we have a completely different business model. But I will talk more about it uh, later in the webinar. That's a small okay. intro about me. But for sure, I will talk more uh, about the company uh, later this uh, this webinar. Perfect. And uh, so basically, uh, Bidroom is uh, is an OTA where you can get bookings in a different way. We we'll talk about this later. So yeah. you found a way to actually bring customers, guests to your to your customers, to your hotels and, uh, and apartments. So which actually, is really great. Initially, it was first bring the fairness back and, and be transparent, and then the bookings will come by itself, right? Amazing. We, we're gonna. I'm very curious to listen more more in depth about what you, you you guys are doing. And, and Sylvia, Sylvia, uh, we met, uh, funnily enough, we met in yeah. HomeAway, the RBO headquarters, and uh, you 
you have you know property manager company but you also have an ota uh, can you tell us a little bit about dormoa yeah so well dormoa is uh we started this adventure about uh, uh two years ago starting the pilot test uh, uh january last year and uh, our aim was to create a different platform for just a, just a vacation rental selected for the Italian user. So something completely different that actually at the moment uh, it doesn't exist in Italy in, in terms of offer. Uh, my background is always, has been always in vacation rental. Uh, I started my first company about uh, six years ago. Uh, which is called Charmstay. We guest over 6,000 uh, guests a year in London, Barcelona, and we are open in Italy next year as well. So, and how Dormo has started is quite funny because uh, we, uh, we started to actually interact in just in marketing, organic marketing with Italian. Uh, Antonio with doing direct bookings for my property management company. And one feedback we always had was, uh, you know, Italians didn't know where, where to go to actually book a flat or whatever, because they're not very used to the OTA environment. So one day we said, well, what if we create something they, they really want in a very simple way, uh, customizing the OTA for their uh, needs in terms of behavior, in terms of uh, requ requirements. So that's how Dormo started. And um, it's actually doing well as well, so I'm happy. <laughs> so basically, instead of people having to adapt to the OTA, the traditional OTA, which is a big monolith, and everybody has to adapt to the model, you decided to adapt to what people actually want. Is well, it the way to put it? Uh, yeah, it's the example. I, I give the example to everyone. Uh, like, uh, uh, you know, there is even a, a study it's called P PDF, uh, so in marketing. So it's the differentiation of communication. Maybe you're selling the same thing, but you customize that for the tradition of that specific country. If you go to China, you have to change according to the Chinese behavior. And sometimes that is not, um, is not actually done from a lot of OTA, which they just open into a country, translate their own website, create a call center, and that's easy. But it's actually not, because some, um, I give an example, Italians, for 48%, uh, their decision making is on social media. So, of course, the strategy needs to be uh, according to, to the Italian behavior in my case. So that's why we decided to create Dormo. So, so basically, the OTA is. Uh, sorry, we're already going into the discussion here, but then I, I yeah. don't want to lose this. Basically, the OTAs are very good at globalizing, not as good as localizing. Even if, of course, they they try to, but it's really hard to localize when you are doing two hundred countries, and you grow, you grow very fast, right? Okay, but you tell us more about that. Um, yeah. You you have a fellow of Veronese, Sergio Cucini, just came in, so. Ah, oh, ciao, ciao Sergio. Sergio. <laughs> okay, I'll start asking Antonio. So Antonio, how long have you been in vacation rentals, Antonio? Since you left uh, the flights? About years 15. Or more? 15 years. Yeah. Okay, so you, you go you go, re, you go back there. So, direct bookings. Uh, could you tell us a little bit the history of direct bookings, how it evolved and where we stand today, in, or, in your opinion? Uh, yeah, in my opinion, we've had this conversation a, a few days ago, you and I. Yeah. Uh, in what I believe is that basically this this industry evolved, uh, exploded basically in a matter of just the last few years. So that when we talk about fifteen years, uh, it's just like talking about the, the Stone Age in normal time. Uh, and I'd say, and I'd mean by that that like fifteen years ago. There were already a few OTAs. Um, the, the, the ones of you who are more into it will remember holidayrentals.co.uk, which later became home away, holidaylettings.co.uk, which turned into TripAdvisor. Mm -hmm. uh, those were in the UK. And then you had the, you know, the Abritel, the Fibo Direct, uh, and all the others, Homely Days in France, uh, and so forth. So in the beginning, uh, basically, what you what, what I did was uh, uh, immediately starting doing uh, my own website because basically uh, if you wanted to get direct bookings uh, in an internet age not the one where you get just phone calls or you do it the old way like 20 years ago uh, you have to have your own 
I didn't call it OTA, but your own website, your own uh, shop where people need to end up. And as such, it had to be fantastic, beautiful. It had to lure in people. It had to convince people that uh, the place was really worth uh, researching more, digging deeper, contacting the owner and making, in, in the end, making a reservation. And uh, so uh, there were not that many people uh, pointing to website. What people normally did was just basically listing on the website, on the OTAs, on the listing sites at the time, and just waiting for uh, bookings to come in through the OTAs. That developed the sort of dependency uh, from the OTA from the very beginning and basically was because, uh, you know, you didn't really have to do much work. Reservations were just coming in. Uh, you were making tons of money. It was easy and uh, the business model was different as well. So you'd pay for like a, whatever, a few hundred bucks a year and that was it. But that's when I was thinking, no, this is not going anywhere. You definitely don't want to put all your eggs in your in, in your basket. You need hey Piotr, I see Piotr Kubicek is here too. Oh from Hello, Hello here? Hello here. Piotr Kubicek. Ah, Piotr. Hello here. And um, and so uh, basically from the very beginning I started learning marketing, uh, learning web design. Uh, uh, doing PR, studying communication, uh, and I started doing several things uh, which led to lots of uh, direct bookings. The good old way was, you know, nurturing your guests, the first one coming in, who would then become your ambassador back home and would talk good about you to all their friends and bring you other friends. This was one way of getting direct bookings. Uh, another one was repeat bookings. So these people coming back uh, a number of times, uh, offering discounts, uh, um, doing several little things, uh, including the conversion as well. At the beginning, if you remember, there was not that much um, hiding of uh, uh, contact information because basically the listing sites what they were doing they were just sending you inquiries uh, with uh, all the phone numbers and names uh, and contact details so they were making money uh, off a package a year they weren't interested in commissions so that was fine for them so at that point at that time uh, uh, it was easy to convert people into uh, bookings if you were using lots of communication things. Web, a stunning website, and then stunning approach as well uh, in terms of conversion uh, when they do the beautiful kind of things that they were contacting you. They were also contacting other eight or 10 properties. So speed of reply was the number one conversion uh, thing for direct bookings and the way you replied made the difference. So based on these two things, I remember there was a study from TripAdvisor years ago that was saying that speed of reply was vital in converting inquiries into solid bookings. And uh, the way you replied, of course, for me was absolutely the rest in the conversion process. Move fast forward a few years, what happens? This becomes mainstream. Lots of money poured into the market. Big companies, Airbnb, Booking.com, Expedia, spending billions and billions of dollars into advertising and, uh, and into basically building a culture of easiness for people to make bookings. Um, er, psychologically speaking, uh, the, the human being tends to to, to choose shortcuts. When we have to solve the problems or solutions, we are lazy. So we tend to, cho to choose shortcuts. And uh, the OTAs know this mechanism very well. So when you are presented with a product that it's easy to use, let's see booking.com, how easy it was to make a booking. It is to make a booking with just a few clicks and that's it. 
um, the experience is super easy and super straightforward and smooth, people make a booking there on that site. And then they become a habit and uh, they, they get used to turn to that site instead directly whenever they need. They become this habit of of being a customer of that listing site. So it became much harder to get direct bookings. In. Right, right. Okay. Because so, uh, uh, because we there's a there's a nice book I'll put here. I, I prepared a link, which I think is this one here. Maybe some of you may may know or may have heard, heard of Robert Cialdini. It's an American that wrote a book called Influence and uh, the Art of of uh, persuasion and uh, that tells you about this mechanism of shortcuts and getting people used to do things the easy way so that in the end uh, you turn people into your customers or you turn people into whatever you are aiming at uh, just because you're using certain uh, mental triggers or things that make for the shortcuts to, to work. So to end, uh, the, the OTAs developed this culture of uh, it's easy to make bookings, just one, two, three clicks. It's uh, secure because we provide you the safe environment uh, where, where uh, we guarantee for you that this is a safe place, even though we know it's not really that way because scams are there too, but people believe in the brand. So branding is also super powerful, super important. Uh, and uh, these things together made it and make it harder to get direct bookings simply because people are lazy, generally speaking. And so they tend to get used to do the same thing over and over again, turn back to the same site over and over again to make a booking. Now, something changed uh, with uh, COVID over the last- I was gonna ask you right now, yeah, okay. So uh, at least that's what I've seen uh, here uh, in Italy. I don't know if Silvia, even though she has the, 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 the site in London with the properties in London, I don't know if she's dealing with Italians. Maybe. Sorry, Antonio, we, sorry, we just opened Italy. We have 7,000 units now. Okay, sorry, didn't know, didn't know about it. So probably you witnessed that as well, that Italians uh, at least, uh, uh, because, because of COVID, uh, there are certain limitations that the OTAs cannot, cannot, cannot help with at the moment. They're trying to, but they still can't help. And that is, uh, people want to feel safe and want to know what they're going to do, want to know how the situation is, where they're going to stay. So what they do is they try to contact the owner or the property manager direct. So at least in Italy, they're using some of the OTAs predominantly sort of like the yellow pages. They go there, check the property, then go to Google, look for the website and bypass the OTA and contact. Well, there's uh, no language barrier anymore because everybody's booking in the same country. So it's not like the, the Dutch guy calling somebody in Rome, right? So that's, but there's another thing, there's the whole direct booking um, movement which came out and this is not related to, to the fact that people want to talk it's because there's a people want to get out of this relationship or have a more balanced relationship so what do you think about this uh, is the direct booking movement going somewhere and uh, yeah what is your idea about this basically I think it is uh, it's going to take some time uh, and COVID uh, is making is speeding up this process in my opinion because okay. people, there is a part of people that have have always the habit of looking at a property on one of the OTAs and then Googling the name of the properties to see if they find a website and can do a direct contact. So there is a small part, which has been growing over the last few years, but it's still a minor part of people who is actually looking to book direct. With COVID, this trend, at least in Italy, I've seen it increasing spectacularly over the last couple of months. We personally as well, we've had the same trend everywhere. All the bookings we got 
People contacted us direct. They called us up. I always ask, where did you find us? And they say, booking.com, Airbnb. And then Google. And then Google. And then Google. Okay, that, that, so, that's really yeah. interesting. So, okay. Um, thank you, Antonio. Michael, your model. Tell us, tell us your model. Uh, like as we, if we were five, like nobody knows what you're doing. Okay. Uh, and yeah, tell us the situation with that. I'll try to keep it short on Antonio to keep the, the conversation interactive. Um, to explain actually our business model, it's super simple. So you can book a hotel. So this is not different. Uh, what makes different is that we don't charge high commission to the hotels. When the OTA is charging, well, you know, the 15, 20% commission, we said, okay, we don't charge high commission to the hotels, but we asked them to give a discount to our members. So actually our members, paid members, this is where we also make our income. So our members, they're paying an annual fee and in return, they get access to the discounted rates. We're asking the hotels to give at least 5% discount. So if you're calculating, you pay normally 15%, in this case, you give 5% back to the member, which means you're still earning 10% more. Users happy, hotels happy. They can, it's up to them, up to them if they're giving 5%, 7% or more. They can also give more extra benefits, for example, an upgrade or welcome trip, et cetera. So besides always have the best price for the members, you also can get something extra. So actually, as we often say, we're pretty the good guys in the industry. Uh, we also, in this case, pushing actually the reservation directly to the hotel. So if I explain a direct booking, so at the end, it's kind of a direct booking because the hotel charged the customer which means we don't charge the customer because the hotel does uh, by doing their check-in, uh, which means also the hotel received the, the data from the customer so they know who's coming. Then also his contact details. If you want to send them a pre-arrival email, feel free. It's your guest. Uh, so this is in a, in a nutshell what, uh, what Bidroom is doing. Uh, let me ask you a question here. Uh, HomeAway, as Antonio was mentioning, was doing something different, but still they were much cheaper. Okay, we, we are paying for a service to the OTA and they got really expensive. That's the bottom line. You found a cheaper way, I mean, a way to, to sell this service cheaply and uh, HomeAway was doing the same. It was $300 or the platinum was 1500 a year. And that was it. Yeah. While it, the commissions you pay every year to booking for one listing can or to Airbnb can be much higher. Now, why did, why did HomeAway have to change business model? Because... Airbnb was making so much money that it will overspend them in, in advertisement, right? So Bitroom is making less money than Airbnb or, or booking. So how, how can you not be over, it's not the right word, but how, how can you survive with this, the money you're making? So well, the difference is, is that we, it's, they charging the properties, but we're charging the members. So if you know the numbers of people all around the world, they are putting the members. So it's not that we charge the membership fee to the hotels, what HomeAway was doing, but we charge our member, so the, the booker in this case, the fee to get access to discounted rates. So if you're looking at, there's no limitation of two or 300,000 properties because you no, know, there's millions of travelers are out there. It's still less money than, you know, you are extracting less money than the OTAs. Even if every member pays 29 euro a year, it's still very little compared to what a guest indirectly pays to booking or directly pays to Airbnb if they book a, a few times. So yeah. you will never have a budget, the same budget as this guy have. So what, what's the secret? It's like because the hotels yeah. prefer you in a way? It's a completely different distribution strategy. When we have recurring income, I think when you see that OTAs have a drop of 80% of their revenue, we have recurring income. So we are a much more sustainable business model as we still can share the numbers. Of course, we give them much more benefits now also travel related, but also not travel related. Um, and also we, our revenue stream is completely different. So when once we have to convert a member into our platform, it means we have a relationship with him. So what we have to do is make sure that we continue the relationship with them. It makes also, we don't have to keep investing to generate bookings because we have a relationship with this member already. So booking, they keep spending on, on acquisition of those bookers. You can see on Google, anywhere else, but we don't have to. Uh, also, we have a lot of partnerships. So I think that 80% or more from our members, they come with a partnership. So we have partnerships with many out there, with Pisa and many other companies. So they actually helping us to grow our user base and they adding our our product, our service to their existing product. So if he's the card holders, they get access to bedroom for discount price or even for free. 
uh, depends on the partnership. So uh, this actually accelerated our growth by using different uh, uh, customer bases as well. Uh, so these partnerships bring you some extra <clears throat> money? They bring us a lot of members and those members, of course, members. They, they're paying. Okay. So well, it's very okay. interesting. I mean, you know, yeah. w like Antonio's been 15 years. I've been also a long time in the industry. You get stuck in these models and I, it never occurred to me that a membership model could work. And then when I discovered Bidroom and I saw it was working, I said, well, that, that's a potential model for trips too. Why not, right? Maybe oh, not trips, yeah. maybe somebody else, but it's really interesting. And uh, I see you shared a code, M um, MRFP20. Yeah, so they have MRFP. a free they have a pre, uh, bedroom profile. They okay. use. Is this expiring anytime soon? No. Will be in the so coming months we're gonna, can we share it later on with this? Yeah, that's fine. Not that's on social fine. media, but in here to the attendees, it's fine. Well, say again, sorry? Prefer not on social media, but you can share to the attendees. They can do or to your Oh, ah, okay. Not the social media then. Okay. We won't put it on the YouTube channel okay, then. Okay, great. great. I'm going to subscribe as soon as we finish. Okay, perfect. Thank great. you, Sylvia. I just need okay, the so, <laughs> so now, Sylvia. Sylvia, you, you did a small miracle there because you're actually a traditional OTA in the sense that you charge a commission. Uh, still, you manage to reach some customers or be found by customers. Yeah. You were, like at the beginning, you, tell, you told us a little bit. What is your magic sauce? or like, Whatever you can share with us. I'm sure you have a million secret things you don't want to share, which is <laughs> fine. No, uh, fine. But it, the, the, what really blew my mind in London when we met was like, you got to a demographic which I never thought even existed anymore. We, we always give for granted that everybody is, is on, on the smartphone, they have credit cards, they want to book with the easiest way is booking or Airbnb, and it's not. Can you tell us more about that? So, first of all, I just want to, because I can see Antonio for, probably didn't know that we were in Italy, so I just want to say that, yes, we, yeah. we completely pivot Dormo, so we... January, we were opening every single city in Europe, but we pivoted in opening all Italian domestic markets within three months. So we worked really hard and we managed to do it. So now we are full operative in Italy. We launched as well an app, the first Italian tourist app, which we launched within three months' time. And now you can travel Italy and discover Italy, if you're Italian, with over 3,000 itineraries written by all the biggest bloggers in Italy. So what do you mean the first? Creating... In what sense, Silvia, the first? There is no, there is no, there is no uh, a tourist app uh, at the moment to discover Italy uh, like the one we have done. Just download it and check it. But uh, now when you want to travel in Italy... Um, uh, we, of course, our main goal is to sell apartments, but what we did, we said, well, this year it will be nice to create a project. So we created the project hashtag Viaggiare Italiano, so Travel Italian. We collaborate, we partner with a lot, a lot of bloggers in Italy that they needed a lot of help too. Uh, and we, de we developed this hub in which, uh, if you are Italian, of course, you can open it and whatever you are, you can plan your trip uh, with over 3,000 uh, itineraries, uh, 1,500 experiences, whatever you need to plan your trip in Italy, even just for one day. So instead of going on Google, we decided to do this, uh, this kind of app to actually give more to our customer and to our community. So that's so what the first in the sense that is the, the, most, the most complete. There is well, there is no there is no other app like that. So yes, I, th I guess okay. it's the first. <laughs> so, okay, okay, okay. Um, so there is no one has done it at the moment. So there is one company that did it, but after us, so ours is the first. Um, okay. So anyway, uh, regarding uh, your question, uh, um, so what we did different. So uh, I come. I'm a property manager myself, and one thing that I I saw like was uh, that you know I was spending a lot a lot to booking.com, uh, I was, or Airbnb or whatever, um, very hard to get direct bookings. Um, uh, then I don't like, don't have the emails of the customers. So Dormoa starts not just as a B2C, but as well like a project to help as well the host, the owner. So it's been developed in two ways, not to be the bad guys, but to be like a sort of good OTA as well. Yeah, like good room, I guess, yeah. So on the customer side, uh, we actually developed a marketing strategy, which is actually uh, uh, 
perfect for Italian-like behavior, and that makes us uh, growing very, very fast in terms of social media. We have uh, over 5,000 uh, followers at the moment just, in, just as a startup, and we still need to use our funding round, which we just closed uh, um, uh, this month. Um, we, um, uh, sorry, I, I lost a second. <laughs> you said 5,000, I think it was more. 50,000, 50,000, oh, okay, okay. sorry, 50,000 50, followers. Yeah, we reached, this month we reached over uh, 500,000 uh, uh, reach in Italy. Um, <clears throat> so it's growing, it's growing quite a lot uh, in terms of social. And our goal was uh, instead of creating the typical OT way with a pay-per-click, a fixed commission, okay, easy calculation, uh, is, a, is, a, is a game of numbers. We wanted to create a community of travelers. And that's the most difficult thing to do because it's like direct booking. You require branding. You require uh, direct emails. Uh, you require attention to customers. So if you go on our Facebook page, except for today that we did, uh, we did, we sponsored an apartment, but normally you never find that we're talking about apartments. We just want to help the community. We just want to help the, the guests to actually go and find the information they need. So why uh, why do I go in Dormoa and I don't go in Booking or Airbnb? So that's that's a question I asked to many many okay. Italians coming to London because uh, uh, during the pilot test we sent uh, a lot of guests uh, from Dormoa into Charm Stay Apartments, which is uh, my company. So I was personally doing the check-ins just to try to understand why you're not booking with booking.com and you're booking with me because we wanted to know if that was a winning project or not a winning project and the most barrier they say first of all is uh, that they never used booking.com because we have to say the truth in italy just 20 percent of uh, italians are cast are ota users so 80 percent are not this is a this is are a you problem. joking i'm sorry this is from Statista, January 2020. I can send you the slide. 20% of, of the whole population, you mean? The whole population is using OTI. So 80% yeah. of the market is not. So they, Including kids and everybody or like the, the well, potential? I, I send you, no, the potential customers. Yeah, not, okay, not, but this is people. huge. I mean, it's well, by Italy was also the last to get credit cards. It's, I understand that, right? So I mean, we are really so, slow. We are really slow. Okay. Yeah, so, well, there is a willing to, to book as well, but they're, you know, as behavior, we found out, first of all, they weren't trusting much the OTA. They were afraid uh, uh, as well, like, to have problem with the call center. They have all these, this, I mean, not easy click and pay, but, you know, first uh, first user barrier we ha they had. Secondly, the communication completely different as well, like in terms of marketing, not just in terms of Italian. Um and then the uh, Italians, they have this, as I said before, roughly 48% of Italians prefer to, book, to have all the information by social media first and then going to find the place. And I agree with Antonio, direct bookings in Italy are a huge, huge percentage. And, um, and now I, I wrote something that will, will uh, make you happy as well, Antonio. Um, so that's, that's how we started. On the host side, um, um, I take uh, the discussion that Antonio did before. Um, he, you, you were talking about contact information. So what we try to do is to structure an OTA, which actually help the host as well, because I'm a personal believer that if uh, an OTA gives me a service, I pay for it. But I need to get a service not just a customer, and they retain all the information of the customer. That's what I don't like. So with our, our host, they can, after they, they make the guest makes the booking, they can see all the contacts of the guest, and we're very happy that a host can actually build their database. For our, well, our that, that's huge. Sorry to interrupt you. It's huge because when I'm paying uh, an invoice of 100 euro to booking.com for a booking, and I don't get, unless I really go for it, I don't get any contact detail and the customer still belongs to booking. I'm paying a lot of money for just a booking. Well, if I get the direct contacts, well, you know, that, you know, I could get a return booking and then a return customer. And that price could be, could be a price I'm ready to pay. But if I'm paying just for a booking, a hundred euro, which is probably close to my margins or, or even higher than my margins, then it's not a good deal. So what you're doing is saying, okay, guys, this is the number, this is the phone. If they want to go back through Dormois, fine. Otherwise, it's fine anyway. 
Yeah, so we developed uh, uh, some, so it's, it's just a concept that, because I'm a property manager myself, if I pay an OTA, there has to be a service. So we try to build Dormo in that way. Uh, and so first of all, yeah, the contact details of the customer, because I believe if you pay, uh, we charge 10% anyway, so we are cheaper than booking.com. Uh, and uh, <laughs> uh, so we provide the content information. But one thing that we just developed, actually, if you book through Dormo now, um, all the host, they have their personal concierge app for free. So a guest can go in Dormo app and insert their booking code. And automatically, it comes out all the app customized for your apartment and your, your holiday. So all the information about your check-in, about the host, their email, whatever they need is there. And that helps the, guest as well, the host as well to cut the communication, which sometimes is very high because of, uh, I'm sure, Antonio, happened to you a lot of times. You don't have the email of the customer. Uh, they don't check the inbox because they don't know how to look in the, you know, in the booking uh, or, or portals. And there is a very hard communication between the guests. So we try to take away all of that and, and make it nice and simple for the guest and for the host. And I add the last thing, and we, that helped us as well. To We just launched this week uh, our offer uh, promotion, which uh, is in the app. Uh, we actually decrease our own commission to provide discounted uh, to help us to increase the bookings in this period. Uh, and our community can actually get access to all these discounts. So it's similar to Bidroom, a bit like the sense of community. Um, so it works. So it's, What you just said is a taboo because neither Airbnb, Booking or Expedia even mentioned for a second that they would lower the commission for even a month. That's like something which is an unspeakable thing, right? So we low we low do. our because mm. we take we take a service fee from the guest, which is actually written. The guest actually pays it because we provide a lot of assistance, a lot of uh, we have a software that does customized quotes and all this kind of stuff. So uh, we actually decrease our, our own uh, income as well, like uh, in order to provide offers. So okay. which, in this period, we're trying to, you know, give our community an extra and the host, they can get more bookings as well, which is good. Uh, there's an interesting comment from Sergio. Sergio is a is a hotel owner in Verona. Maybe you you know Silvia has got Hotel Firenze just out of the the door. The, 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 well, very close to the to the to the to the arena anyway. So he's a very he's an expert in hotels and he's also a property manager. And he says, "Yes, look, but it's your own job to take the phone, the email of the guest." before he leaves your property. Um, yeah, of course. Uh, there is a, it's difficult. Even if you get the email address and the phone of your guests, it's difficult to get them back directly. Uh, not, not for an OTA, but for an owner, for, for a hotel. Because like you go to, like last time I went to Florence, I, got, I went to this hotel and they asked my email address and then they, they went on months and months sending me email address. Uh, sorry, sending me emails about coming back, and I have zero plans to go back to the hotel in Florence for the rest of my life. It was a good one, but you know, I just don't do that. So people are very careful in giving their direct contacts because they're already bombarded by OTAs, of course, and they don't want to be bombarded by the, every single hotel and every single uh, apartment actually where they stay. Right, so. What I'm trying to say, OTAs are a superior way to book in general, better than direct bookings in many ways, uh, because they, they concentrate everything. Uh, I, I choose one OTA, which is Bidroom, Dormoa, Booking, or Airbnb, and I'm done with it. Um, so it, it's this goes a little bit against the direct booking movement. What do you think, Antonio? Uh, th that's, for me, the biggest thing, right? Direct bookings are great for the host and the property manager and the hotel, not really for the guest because it, it they introduce a big amount of overhead, as you were mentioning, right? So how, how do you see this developing? Like, sorry, let, let me let me say what I, what I actually mean. I think that the future is an OTA, which does what OTAs do, but defend the the position of the of the providers in a better way than, than what's happening today. Today we have an imbalance, right? So 
Uh, Bedroom is doing that. Uh, Sylvia, you're doing that in a way too. Trips is going to try to do the same thing. The problem is not the OTA in short. The problem is when the OTA gets too much power and gets too much money out of it. Well, uh, Antonio, what do you think about that? Uh, yes, because when, once the OTA gets too much power, they rule the game and they don't rule the game in your favor most of the time. So that's why people get upset, as you've seen. You've seen that, uh, like very openly with Airbnb, when what they've done with the refund policy, uh, followed by Booking.com as well, uh, to a lesser degree, but still, which caused the total unrest in the community of property managers and hosts, because you know people uh, reached out to their guests at the beginning of the pandemic, saying, "Hey, look, we are, you know, we're all in a difficult situation, so." If you don't mind, maybe we can keep the deposit you gave us or whatever for a future voucher. You can come back. And the majority of guests said, yeah, sure, no problem. We understand the situation. We'll come back later. No problem. And then all of a sudden, Airbnb steps up and says, no, 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 no. We'll give you all the money back. So this is me. This has been like the, the shooting in, in your foot. As I was telling you the other day, uh, incredible. I mean, there, there's incredible lack of common sense. Yeah. Because it's not common practice and because uh, there's a certain corporate mindset that is looking at numbers and money rather than common sense and values, uh, which rules, unfortunately, a big part of the world. So uh, to go back to your question, uh, in a way, there is a part of uh, the clientele, which is travelers, which in the end is us as well, because we always tend to think, uh, you know, travelers are not property owners or not property managers, but it's not really that way. There's lots of us who are property managers and hosts and still travel. So we're, we want to find a way to get back in, uh, in, in, in charge of the game, get the power back in our hands for what we can. And these are the ones that go the extra mile and therefore do their due diligence, they do the work, the extra work online uh, to look for the property. Then you're right, as you said, once you get to a property, there's a problem that how professional is the person there? Which tools do they use? Do they have like safety procedures? How safe am I at booking directly? What if I cancel and he doesn't want to give me back the money? You know, this is probably in line with what you are saying with trips, which I believe, you know, in the future, uh, once it's developed, uh, it, it brings uh, that fear away. Uh, probably, I think, probably you'll be better than, than me at saying this. It'll bring that part uh, away and therefore will encourage more people to use uh, a portal like Trips uh, or a, a, a more disintermediate uh, portal to make the things. That's, that's more or less it. I mean, uh, when you remove certain risks, and the OTAs are good at that because they provide you with the right, the perfect environment to make uh, uh, a safe booking, even though once again, there are scam properties inside the OTA, so it's no safe booking at all, guaranteed. Uh, um, but at least it works, the idea works. It's easy, it's nice, it's safe, it's a big brand, it's, in my, it's wired in my brain. And when I talk to people, you know, there's even the verb, I, Airbnb, I, I, I put this on the Airbnb, on Airbnb. So once you get to that level, it really is inside the mind of people. And it's really hard to get people to change. Unless something happens, I was telling you the other day, like the, the pandemic, like COVID, and it lasts long enough. To change the habits. To change habits into people because if the pandemic we hope not but if this is going to last a few more months or a little longer than that apart from the fact that lots of us will go bust and many business will go bankrupt 
But um, for those that staying, you know, people will just get used to make their own research uh, and uh, book direct a little more. Then over time, once everything settled down, there's probably going to be a return on to the easiness of making bookings. So there will be an increase again in the OTA percentage of bookings. But maybe all days at that time is going to be are going to be different and evolved. Maybe in a video a few months ago, I said Airbnb has reached its peak. And that's my opinion. We're never going to go back to such a situation because the goodwill, the goodwill is gone and uh, they're going to still be around for a long time, but not at a level, in my opinion. Uh, can ask... I can I just sorry? Can yeah. I just say something to Antonio? Sure, sure. Uh, you're right about verifying and everything. For for example, during the, during COVID, when we had to do some cancellation, uh, unfortunately, we had some companies in London that closed a lot of buildings, so we had to reallocate the guests, and we got a shortage of accommodation because of the lockdown, because uh, people were just shouting companies. Um, there was this customer that she nearly made me cry. She said. Um, uh, I said, sorry, we don't actually have anything, so we need really to cancel your booking. We can't even give you the voucher because those properties are not existing anymore. Uh, and then she's like, no, please, I want to wait another month because I know Dormois verifies booking. I don't want a verifies properties. Thinks- I don't want to go on booking.com. Because the other thing we're doing differently is that we verify every single listing and we just accept property managers, which is something that now is, is kind of missing. Uh, so I, I I agree with you on uh, on, but we talked about that Luca last time. Yeah, we had a we had a nice panel a couple of weeks ago, and uh, I just shared the 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 video. Uh, I want to ask Michael, what has changed with COVID for your business model, and what's going to change in your opinion? Mm-hmm. Well, I get even calls from different this call of colleagues or people in the industry that it's okay. Your business model makes sense, right? When you have a recurring income. When you're transaction focused and your bookings are dropping with 80, 90 percent, there's zero, there's 10 percent income as before. When you have, for example, uh, make an example, yeah, when you have 10 million paying members and they maybe few percentages, maybe they churn, but it's it's minimal and they keep keep paying their services. You still have the recurring income. That's why. Yeah, it, that's actually my question. Yeah. If I paid in November my membership, yeah, and next November I have to pay again, but mm-hmm. we are back in half of lockdowns. We don't travel. Yeah. Will I renew it or will I wait until COVID goes away? Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, good question. What we did directly when the whole lockdown started, we and that's why partnership was very important. We also included partnerships, which are or uh, focusing on domestic travel, maybe in a tourist activity in your own country, but also different benefits. For example, could be a gym, could be etc. So we uh, different kind of services we included into the membership, which gives actually more value to the membership what we charging to members. So even though they might not use their membership, they're coming four or five or six months or even longer. Still, this twenty nine euro still had a lot of value what they can use for different services. So it's not only the, the discount on the hotel booking, but also added value. And I think if you see sustainable business models, of course, we all know the Spotify and Netflix business models, which is pretty similar to us. Of course, it's new in travel. A lot of people has to get used to it. I think it's, uh, and I, th- I will not be surprised if the, the company that you mentioned before, maybe in Airbnb or others, will also have a similar business model to maintain actually the relationship with their with their clients, but they also have a recurring income stream because at the end, as a company, you're much more financial stable. So in the long term, your yeah. model uh, gives you more resilience and, uh, and and do you see this growing because of the new situation? Because people will travel kind of less and more last minute, right? It's like, mm-hmm. we're getting all these last minute bookings now, but last even the same day. So uh, is it well, actually, better for you or worse? No, when I look at the numbers, actually, there not many people actually unsubscribe from the service. And I was expecting more, to be honest. Um, but actually, April was still a pretty OK month for it and growth. And even, of course, numbers on transactions, they're limited. I have to be honest, the, the transactions are limited. But still, but the- isn't this the, the, the New York time thing that you, you you forget that you have a it's on a credit card. And it just happens. You, you don't, It's an effort to go and cancel. No, we're How just, hard is it to we're not hiding this. So in this case, of course, you try to. But I think it's more important to keep a relationship with the traveler and not pushing bookings. We're not saying, hi, Luca, please go next week on holiday. No, at all. We just stop this kind of communication for a while. 
what we just okay new different kind of partnership we did we also for example and uh, uh, sylvia mentioned community we also okay our hotels they're also community how can we help the hotels we waive all the fees for 2020 for all the hotels because we still have a minimal transaction fee for them but also it's okay we can connect you to uber eats if you want to get for example still your restaurant running so it's more than in this in this times so i think when you're creating relationships and maintaining relationships then you can come out stronger and that's i think what airbnb booking and xp there forgot to do to maintain the relationship but they were just only thinking about themselves and i think that will hurt them in the future you see what is happening now for if they want to just not firing not firing uh, airbnb a lot of negativity all around them so i think this people will not forget this and i think people like loyalty and i think we should try to do everything to keep them loyal to us and i think they also saw that we our approach was differently and that's why it's okay if Trevor come back, I'll use those good guys again because I know they want to make it more fair in the industry. And to come back next to Sylvia, uh, as I mentioned in, in, the, in the chat, you seem like good guys. Commission <laughs> don't have to be bad. I want to comment on this, but also to make it fair, right? And this, I think, also what the, 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 the especially the OTAs were doing, forcing hotels by, for example, pricing, they're controlling. Uh, if you see the contract of the OTAs in the brain interjecting, etc., I think that's bad. So. Commission doesn't always have to be better, but at least make it fair. And I think this fairness, people realize it now. Uh, I'm from the Netherlands. If you see what actually is written about Booking.com, even though, of course, it's a, it's a Dutch company, they got a lot of negativity. It's newspapers will fool because what they did, asking for government money, then in this case, to, to keep people one month later, still they're firing people. There were a lot of negativity around them. And as uh, Antonio said, okay, the longer it takes, I agree, the more uh, people take a distance from the OTA. Okay. Silvia, what do you think has changed in terms of uh, customer acquisition because of COVID and, and what are going to be the long term? The things so, we stay. Uh, so I'm not... Well, so I tell you a bit of the, the data we had uh, this, uh, this month. Well, First of all, uh, marketing expense, conversion, everything changed. Because you have to think, uh, if you go, I've got, for example, Airbnb and Booking.com on my inside competitor. So I can see, you know, their performance on, on social media. And, and they, I mean, for what I can see, then maybe I'm wrong. They, they decreased their investment for 91%, roughly, each of them. Uh, you can go, you just need to click on inside competitors and you can see the pages. So... Um, but on the other side, there is as well, like uh, during coronavirus, there has been a completely change in uh, behavior uh, in terms of uh, users. Uh, they started to interact much, much more. There has been less ads as well for about three, four months. And even now it's less competition on the ads. So I would say in terms of marketing behavior, yeah, a bit, everything changed, still adjusting a bit because a lot of players are missing. In terms of conversions, I have to say uh, we targeted mostly the Italian domestic market and I completely agree with Antonio. Uh, direct bookings uh, has been uh, a vast majority this year in Italy. Um, we, we actually arrived quite late because we, we opened with Pivot very fast so i can't really say for july or june but what we notice in august is a massive massive interest we never had so many requests in the history of dormo we had like more than a hundred emails a day like it was very hard to answer to everyone um but conversion i have to say not as expected uh, like as normal of course it was mostly last minute uh, mostly one or two days uh, um so Everything, uh, no, not not normal, of course, but I can't say it was great for OTA because the conversion, uh, it, was, it was very low. We personally focused more on building, on helping, on uh, creating new projects, find the time to develop new stuff, rather than, you know, attacking the market and be the guys that needs to, to make all the sales. Like, so we prefer to give to actually establish a great relationship with our customers. And we are ready to invest our budget as well when everything starts back on normal with much more people following us, much more people uh, subscribing to our newsletter. We had this month, we have a 350% more subscriber to our newsletter. Uh, so we're trying to retain customers instead of just uh, using them to convert them immediately. 
Great. That's that's what I say. Thank you. Uh, our time is up. Mm, thank you very much, guys, for your input. It was really interesting. Let me close with reminding uh, people who are listening uh, what you can do. You can go to vacationrentalworldsummit.com and join the um, the conference Antonio is organizing online this year. When is it, Antonio? October. Oh, sorry, I, I took I, I, I muted you because of the back, feedback. Say again. Uh, 10 and 11 October. 10 and 11 October online. Yeah. Uh, and then the next year is going to be, the following year is going to be in Annecy, France. Annecy, France, Annecy. yes. Yeah. Where it was okay. supposed to be. Yeah, yeah. Antonio always have the best locations. Yeah, yeah, no, it's, it's magic for this. I mean, <laughs> great. Uh, for the bedroom, we have a free coupon. Could you remind it to us? Uh, yeah. I think I have it here. Our FP20. Yeah, our um, FP20. There actually, it was more make as a joke, maybe not to end with. Actually, we had to create a code, which is actually my personal code. And it's actually confirmed Michael was for president in 2020. So <laughs> I, I didn't get it. Sorry, I didn't get it. Code. I remember the code because actually for me it's like Michael was for president in 20. Even oh, though okay. President, I had <laughs> no, it's going to be better than Trump. Remember it easy. So. <laughs> okay, great. And um, the, you mean president of the United States? I don't oh, know. No, I think of bedroom, but I already am. But I keep it like this. Ah, okay, a bedroom. <laughs> great. Um, Sylvia, what about you? What can we do? Can we book on your... Yeah, you can book. You can, uh, can we download the app. If you, well, you are download the app. Okay. Here. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Michael. The, the app for you would be very useful. But for Antonio and Luca, if you want to travel Italy these days with your family, I don't know if uh, Antonio you have kids uh, or fa no. Twenty-three years old already living. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, so. Anyway, we have uh, we have a lot of uh, itinerary experiences and a selected apartments. So we are doing a massive, massive job in selecting it one by one. Very, very hard job. Perfect. Okay. Um, a last thing. So we're gonna start again with the panels in September. On the seventh of September, we have uh, a very interesting subject. We've been, uh, Antonio maybe remembers that when we presented trips uh, in Como at Vacation Rental World Summit, our title was uh, Booking Portal for Tourists and Digital Nomads. But then we dropped that because nobody was worried, nobody wanted to have long term bookings. But And now it's back on fashion for several reasons. So we're going to have a panel on long term bookings and digital nomads with three people who actually book places to stay a month or longer. So we're going to, um, there's been a lot of discussion on long-term bookings lately in the industry, but we have never really met the people who do that. We're going to have Sabrina, who is a long-term digital nomad. We're going to have Deborah from Australia, who often comes to Europe for months at a time. And we're going to have Sam Natras, who is the, the quintessential Digital nomad is in probably in Vietnam right now. I met him in Chiang Mai. He goes to Colombia. He stays months at a time. So we're gonna listen uh, what people need, what our customer need when they look for a place for a month or longer. And there you are. Then we're done with that. Thank you, thank you guys. Um, thank you who was listening today during this this summer, and uh, and to, hope to see you somewhere. When this thing is, is over, when this COVID is over, we can travel freely again. Perfect. Thank you. Stay safe all. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, you Sylvia. Bye. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you, Antonio. Thank you, Michael. Thanks. Ciao, ciao. Bye. Bye-bye. Ciao. Ciao, ciao.